Good morning again, Great Files. Um, this is the last section of the geomorphology, and here we're actually looking at um, what we can do to preserve our water sources um, in this country, right at the source, which is the catchment catchment area. Today I'm competing with sheep, it seems. So we know South Africa um, is a water scarce country, and um, we often suffer under drought. And in some, some areas during the rainy season, there um, are even floods. So we've really got the extremes. Uh, this is what makes it so important that we manage the uh, catchment areas properly. And there's a word that we like to throw around is sustainable use. So um, if we look at this table, these are some of the activities, the human activities um, that have a negative effect on on our water resources. Construction, um, if it's done in an irresponsible way, it could damage wetlands, uh, it creates artificial surfaces, which then allow for more runoff, which then potentially can flood. Incorrect farming practices, here we've got soil erosion that clogs up the rivers, um, the um, siltation in the dams and so on as well, and then eutrophication. That's a word we're going to look at just now. Introduction of alien vegetation. Um, alien vegetation generally, well, as a rule, uses more water than what our um, indigenous vegetation would. And if it gets into the rivers and dams and so on, it clogs up the rivers. The one example of that is water hyacinth. Big problem. Irrigation and farm dams, this pretty much um, is overuse of the water resources. This is some of the problem we've got right now. Our own um, Ebenezer Dam is, is very low and this has uh, got to do with farming and irrigation in the area. Commercial forestry, commercial forestry as a rule uses um, uh, non-indigenous um, trees and these do use more water. Pollution in all of its horrible shapes and forms, um, you know, it speaks for itself, that, that does the damage. Removing natural vegetation on the riverbanks and general deforestation, um, there's, a, there's a super term that we're also going to look at it um, just now as riparian vegetation. And basically, if you remove the um, natural vegetation along the banks of the river, it means the river banks are unstable and erosion happens more easily. And then a very South African problem, but I suppose a whole world problem, is the generation of electricity, of energy. And we're still using coal-fired power stations for most of our electricity generation, and these use an immense amounts of water. So some of the ways that catchment areas um, can be managed is to clear away the alien vegetation. Don't build settlements on the floodplains. First of all, they themselves can be prone to flooding, and then also in, um, the chances are very good that the um, pollution comes from these settlements into the water systems. Environmental impact studies before building dams. I think that's something that has to happen anyway. Preserve our own indigenous forests because they protect the groundwater. They also maintain the um, water layer, uh, the, the, um, the ground. They prevent erosion. And as far as we can, use renewable energy sources. Some other ways that um, we can preserve um, our catchment areas is don't remove the vegetation along the edge of the rivers. This is what I said, that term that I said to you there was riparian vegetation. This is a nice term um, to use and it refers to the water, uh, to the vegetation that is right on the riverbank. So it's sort of the zone between the water and, and the land. That's the riparian vegetation. Educating farmers to use less artificial fertilizers and to plant crops along contour lines and not down them. So that's contour plowing. Eutrophication, we want to prevent that. So that's where there's two, uh, there's been overuse of fertilizers. This washes down into the water systems. And then if there are too many nutrients in the water, then algae grows and it uh, uses all the oxygen in the water and then kills off the whole, the whole marine system then. Erosion, that happens where um, we're not doing contour plowing. Proper maintenance of sewage systems, that's really also got to speak for itself. <clears throat> and then educating the population. 
The more we educate people, the less problem there will be with waste disposal. Get people to recycle everywhere that they can. And then, of course, responsible use of water. Have a look at this picture. How many differences can you spot between site A and site B? If I look at this picture, I think I've got seven differences. How many can you find?